Let me first begin by just simply a word of welcome to all who come here today on this Easter morning and those who have traveled the distance, family and friends, a welcome to you. You'll find in your bulletin there is a yellow card. We would encourage you to fill that out. It's a way for us to stay in touch with one another and also to become better acquainted. You can place it in the offering following the sermon. A word of thanks to those who have given uh, for the flowers in the Easter garden. You find those names and the people that they have given an honor with uh, in your bulletin. And also a word of thanks to the musicians who lead us in song this morning. Thank you. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. The novelist Ernest Hemingway was once challenged to write a story in six words. This is what he wrote. For sale, baby shoes, never worn. Six words that capture loss and heartache and the challenge of starting all over again. There was a, a book put out a few years ago that sought to collect memoirs in six words or brief summaries of life in six words. Some of those uh, sounded like, you know, the essay, What I Did on My Summer Vacation. One person wrote, wake, bathe, work, eat, sleep, repeat. Life just is so predictable. Others identified uh, the challenge of living and dealing with the stress of managing life. One person wrote, straight A student, now flunking judgment. <laughs> or this one, I came, I saw, I worried. In each of those memoirs, there is a sort of bumping up against the, the limits of life. Some just simply accepted those limits, like this one, nearing 60, still on the rough draft. <laughs> Others fighting against those constraints. So I only get six words? <laughs> the Easter story begins with a sense of limitation. That the world has spoken its six words of judgment and that all there was left was to simply get used to it. That if you were to summarize perhaps what the women were thinking as they made their way to the tomb, it would be something like this. Wake, bathe, work, eat, sleep, die. None of the uh, followers of Jesus wanted that ending. They had all hoped for something other. Perhaps a victory, perhaps an escape, but by all means a chance for another day. <coughs> but once it happened, the arrest, the trial, the death, the cross, there was a sense that there was nothing more. That Jesus was dead, that was the end of the story, and there was really nothing else to do other than to bring the spices to cover the smell of death, to pay your last respects and just simply get on with life. So Easter morning always begins with this sense of capitulation to the way the world works. Something that might be summarized like this, that Mike makes right so why try? Or why try hoped you'll be disappointed? Came across an interview with a noted scientist who uh, shared that he did not believe in God and when asked why, he offered two six-word summaries of his viewpoint. For one, he said simply that we're matter, random chance, nothing more. And then he said, well if there is God, why suffering? And perhaps those two summaries sort of summarize the settled expectation of our time, sort of the limits of what we might believe or not believe. Why do we not understand, or we do not understand the true meaning of Easter until we begin to see that this day begins with a capitulation, an acceptance of sort of the way things are. And that the story begins in a way against the grain of that expectation. And that the Easter news is really something that is meant to knock off balance. Everything that we might expect or bring to the day. The women begin the day accepting the world as it is. They had seen the death of Jesus on Friday. They rested on the Sabbath Saturday. Now they bring the spices on Sunday just to finish the job. 
When they arrive, the tomb is empty and Jesus is missing. Luke says they're puzzled, really they're flummoxed, just cannot understand it at all. Some messengers arrive and then we hear these six words, Jesus is risen from the dead. Those six words really are the summary of the Easter message. In fact, they are the summary of the Christian message. Jesus is risen from the dead. And those six words speak to a crack, a break in the expected order of things. That Easter message. It is more than just simply a private exchange between uh, the women and a messenger in the tomb, but rather they speak to the deep set of expectations that we bring to all of life. The first word spoken at that tomb that introduced that summary come in the form of a question. We might actually say more of a rebuke. The messengers say, why do you seek the living among the dead? In other words, why do you go about life as if nothing has changed? Why do you live as if random chance and power are the things that only the things that count? No, Jesus is risen from the dead. There's something sort of expansive to that message, that brief six-word message. That Easter, it's a whole lot more than just simply a maxim of what I'm going to do each and every day. But it has to do and to say something about all of my living and even all of my dying. That the Easter message is more than simply of what it might mean for me to be nice or good in the world, but rather it's about seeing the good of God and even what is evil or bad. Sometimes I wonder whether we try to limit the Christian story to what is predictable or manageable, something that I can fit in with everything else that I know about the world. Perhaps we might even end up cherry-picking the words of Jesus, sort of focusing on the parables or the teachings and not thinking about the resurrection message at all, limiting Jesus just to those few words without regard to that Easter summary, He is risen. It's almost as if we want to keep Jesus in the tomb. Living each day on our own, with only our positive thoughts or our meditations or our daily run to keep us going. Why do you seek the living among the dead? It is not the women were doing anything bad. They were just doing what was expected and they did not expect God could do a new thing. But dear friends, we gather here today because we have this message that has been projected across the generations that God has done a new thing. And the question is, can God do a new thing in my life? How might those six words of Easter change the six words of my life? In the Easter account, the messengers tell the woman that, uh, to remember the words of Jesus, specifically what he had talked about, that he would suffer and die and then rise again. And when they remembered those words, what other words of Jesus did they then begin to remember? Words, perhaps, that they had discounted or regarded as foolhardy or out of touch with the way the world works. What would be those six-word summaries that might come to mind now? Blessed the poor, there's the kingdom, perhaps. Or blessed those who mourn, they'll be comforted. Or words about loving the neighbor and turning the cheek. Or remembering the example of that outcast, good Samaritan. Or maybe the story about the prodigal son, which is really not about the prodigal son at all, but it's about a father who loves too much and has to wait for both children to come home to his love. These words of Jesus, they're not really about a moral story or what it means to sort of be nice in the world. Because apart from the resurrection, apart from that summary that Jesus has risen from the dead, they really don't make sense at all. Only if Jesus is risen from the dead can it make sense to remember words like this. The last are first, first, last. The kingdom of God has come near. Father, forgive them. They don't know. Only if Jesus is it risen from the dead. Does it make sense for us to gather week in and week out and hear these words of Jesus? This is my body given for you. This cup, it is my blood for you for forgiveness. And all of these words, they find their life. And those six words of Jesus, he is risen from the dead.
But dear friends, these six words of Easter are not about Jesus or just about him. Because the Easter message is an invitation for us to rewrite our own story and to wonder what six words that we might write into our lives. To see that the meaning of our life is different because Jesus lives and that the life of Jesus can now be reflected in my life. So how would you rewrite your story? What words would you use to convey that truth? Perhaps like the old hymn, once was lost, now I'm found. Perhaps something more ordinary, gave up shopping, found something better. Or maybe the words spoken at the baptismal font, they're not just simply artifacts from my past, but that I am a child of God, forgiven and freed. Or perhaps in a world that seems to be coming apart at the seams, that the words of St. Francis aren't so strange after all. Make me an instrument of peace. Six words have been spoken this morning. Jesus is risen from the dead. And the question for each and every one of us is this. How will we finish the story? Amen.